one to go ahead and finish up this landing gear. And so I guess this is as good a time as any as to try to open up this battery hatch. So I'm gonna try to use a long box cutter knife and go in between the two formers here. And huh, yeah, I might have to open this piece right here up a little bit. Anyway, let's see how this works. So I went ahead and bit the bullet and opened this up and I've got the forward bolts for the landing gear mount in place and I was able to get my knife down inside there and at least make some marks where I can cut from the top just like I did before. It was right about here that I forgot my plan to use a flush cut saw to cut through the formers before removing the hatch. The reason I didn't have the stringers in here was that I could go in with a saw and cut through the former. I'm using a Japanese flush cut saw. Yep. <laughs> oh boy, if only I had remembered. All right, it should come free now. And I'm getting a little bit of CA here, which I didn't really want. I guess I got a little too heavy with it. I can glue this back to its stringer. That shouldn't be a problem. I cleaned up the top patch a little bit. I glued the sheeting back where it had come loose. Overall, it's doing in pretty good shape. It's going to require a little bit of filling in some areas. The uh, opening here in the fuselage cleaned it up. And uh, it fits fairly well. It's got some gaps in it, uh, but that's okay. That will be taken care of later with epoxy and micro balloons. So, overall, not bad. I'm going to cut out the cross piece of ply to maintain continuity between the two pieces. Um, after I cut out, I've glued in a couple of little um, bits of ply. Now I'm just gonna cut out this cross piece. Battery hatch is looking a little bit better. I got it cleaned up filled in some voids, and I redid the bottom of the balsa formers. I left a little bit of a gap right here. I'm not sure if I want to leave that and use it as like a catch when it comes time to open the hatch to change out batteries, or if I want to use epoxy micro balloons, fill that in and find some other way. I want to go ahead and get um, the method of attachment and I considered using four magnets and that would work but I also I don't really like having to take the hatch off and laying it down somewhere I kind of want to have the idea of having two magnets here and then being able to just kind of open the hatch like this and keep it attached to the airplane so that'll require two hinges here and at first I looked at some offset hinges like this and I thought about using these, but I think what I'm going to go with are just some flat hinges. And I think I will inset the base sort of at an angle uh, 
through the balsa and then the base of the hinge contacting the ply here. And then I can fill that in and hide the bottom. And then the top will just simply be kind of like this. To ensure that both hinge barrels are in alignment so I do not get binding when I open and close the hatch, when I glue these hinges in, I'm going to use a wire to keep them in alignment and then after they're glued in place I can just snip off some new hen hinges for them. The original hinge it's, it looks like brass. It's 40 thousandths of an inch. So to get the wire out, I just snip the end. And I just happen to have some 40 thousandths of an inch wire that is a perfect fit. Colloidal silica was added to the epoxy to thicken it up and keep it from being too runny. Vaseline was added to the hinge knuckle to prevent the epoxy from sticking inside it. I'm using some balsa tabs to help hold the or push the hinge into the balsa. If these tabs stick to the balsa or stick to the hinge, it doesn't really matter. It can be part of the infill that's going to happen later anyway. As expected, that got glued to the hinge, but that's okay. This is going to be part of the infill anyway, so it's easy to sand. While I'm waiting for this epoxy to fully cure, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the recesses here. For this, I'm going to use a finishing resin, and I'm going to mix it with some micro balloons. I want to mix it just to where it won't drip off the bamboo skewer. All right, that's what I'm looking for. It's been about 16 hours. Let's check it out. Okay. Hinges, the top hinges aren't glued in place, that's good. Sticks out just a little bit from the balsa, but that's okay. That's where I use the micro balloons. It should be easy enough to sand down. I think this is going to work okay. Okay, that fared in really nicely. I still need to sand down this 1mm balsa a little bit, but this is going to work out very nicely. Second one has been sanded back, fared in. Both of these fared in very nicely. I'm pretty happy about this. Here is the leftover epoxy and micro balloons. Popped out. I actually had to cut the cut, but it came out easy enough. This is very lightweight. It'll make a great uh, base for carving some part. I know call me crazy for doing this, but one thing I've learned to live by in Taiwan modeling is waste not, won't not. Ready to glue in the top part of the hinges to the hatch. First thing I did was sand it a little recess into the balsa, give a little bit of room for the epoxy so it wouldn't be completely squeezed out. I've also added some tape to protect the fuselage. Don't want to glue it and also added some vaseline to the hinge barrels again add a little bit of micro balloons i'm sorry the colloidal silica and some 30 minute epoxy to 
here, and then we will put that onto here. Before I apply this epoxy silica, I added a couple more pieces of a tape. I want the hinge to kind of sit up a little bit so that it will sit down into this recess that I sanded. And then I also added some tape here. I don't want this epoxy spreading out all over the place, making a huge mess. I want to try to keep it contained if I can. Now I need to position this hatch exactly the way I want it in its final position because this will lock in where it's going to be. Been several hours, let's see how this is going to look. Moment of truth. This can be sanded down. It's like I'm gonna have to shave this corner here just a little bit. But hey, overall not bad. I think it's gonna fit really nice. All right, one more thing. I've not taken out this music wire yet. Let's see if I can get this thing out without tearing everything up. Here we go. All right, so this makes the hatch removable if I ever need to remove it. Really nice, so what I'll do is now I'll just cut this down into individual hinges a quick shave here with some 60 grit and that's much better now i am going to want to try to close this gap with some epoxy micro balloons same stuff i used here i just got to try to remember to put the mixture on here and not here because if i put it on here well it's just going to be the same problem but uh, i think uh i think with that yeah for the magnets i'm going to use some 10 mm diameter magnets i think they're 3 mm thick and one magnet will go on each front and the back on this side and on the hatch i put in some 3 mm light ply with it's a three quarter inch gusset underneath that gives a little bit of meat for the magnets to glue into. I'm rubbing grease pencil on the magnets in the hatch to mark the location for the holes in the mating magnets in the fuselage. Now these magnets are not glued in and I think <clears throat> they're going to pop, yeah, so the ones on top actually came out, that's okay. So the next thing to do is to glue these in and I'll show you how I get a perfect fit as far as the magnets being totally flush with each other and thereby getting the strongest uh, holding power. Whenever I glue these magnets in, I usually do one set at a time, so that way I don't get any kind of shifting in the magnets if, they're, if I'm trying to glue them both in at the same time. So I'm going to start with the magnets in the hatch, give a little bit of room for the epoxy to settle in. For the uh, fuselage side of it, I added some five millimeter thick uh, three-quarter inch square balsa and then I also 
drilled about a one to two mm relief down into that balsa for the epoxy to settle in. Go ahead and get each magnet in, in its respective hole. And then I usually let it sit just a little bit proud. Take a little bit of plastic wrap or cling wrap. It's nice and thin, so that it should sit down and have a very, very small gap between the magnets. And now with the magnet should be you know, flush, the faces should be flush with each other. The cling wrap prevents the epoxy from gluing the hatch to the fuselage. Now I can see right now that I'm going to need probably some 164 plywood facing underneath the hatch so that I don't tear the balsa up. This will be fiberglass, but I'm still probably going to need some something to keep from tearing the balsa up. Now it's pretty strong. Yeah, I'll need probably ply, sand this down just a little bit, ply some 164 ply, because yeah, it won't take much to tear this balsa up. Anyway, I think we're set. Yeah, definitely strong enough.